Come check it out, be rapping for good taxes. Put weed in, crank shell bridge, we flexing. Houston rap style, we banging the heat. Talking Texas football, nothing competing. Got the best podcast, the loudest in the game. Wednesday nights, 8 p.m. Remember the name, we talking draft picks. We talking defense, we break it all down. No nonsense. Now with the run show dive on the mic. Talking Texas football every Wednesday night. The special guest dropping knowledge. Taking the stage. Oh, we get in crash off bridge. Be holding it down in the H town. Wiping it down. Talking touchdowns in H town. Houston culture. We holding it down. Talking news and rumors. Keeping it real. No filter. We got the Texas appeal. The Lone Star City, we're living it up Talking all things Texas, we can't get enough From the football field to the concrete jungle We're ripping bitch town Ain't nothing I'm a bitch What up, what up, what up? Welcome to the Texas Fan Battle Podcast I'm your host for the night, Fifth Ward Crenshaw and the other guys are being divas tonight, so I'm just gonna ride with my boy, Mr. Bo Diggity Seven One Three. Say what's up to the folks. Yo, yo, what's good, everybody? How y'all doing, man? Yeah, they they, they said we three and one, so they said we ain't gotta come to the show. It's all good in the hood. We three and I one, see, man. You know, that's <laughs> you know that's what that's what they do, man. You know, when you when you win and they're like, all right, fuck it, we win and we don't need to be there, you know. But like Bo said, you know the vibes, you know the vibes. We'll keep the vibes going. You know what I'm saying? So, um. We here on a Wednesday, you know, it's still victory week for us. Um, you know, I, when I, every time I start the show on a Wednesday, I like to say, you know, ask y'all what if you guys did watch all 22 or just watch the on uh, the game again, did you see something that you made a mistake on Sunday that you called out that you shouldn't have called out on Sunday? And um, Bo, I I know you like to look at the offensive line yeah, um yeah. real good. Yeah. And uh, I'm pretty sure you've seen something from one of those guys mm-hmm. that you like, damn, I made a mistake, or damn, I was right on. So what you got, Bo? Um, well, you know, my big thing is them picking up stunts. And I watched the All-22 uh, today, a little bit of today. And um, shout out to Kenyon Green on that uh, Nico touchdown pass. Kenyon Green picked up a stunt. And I, like I said, like I, I've been waiting for him to see that for the longest. Uh, that was a play it was him and Fisher. And the person crossed his face, and he picked his head up and picked the, picked the stun up. So, congratulations to you, Keen Green. You're out there. You're learning. You're balling. Keep it up, man. Keep it up, O-line. Like I said, I was hard on them so far the past four weeks. But going back and watching the film really shows you a lot. Even with Cam Akers, like, for sometimes, you know, I, I'll, blame, I'll blame the O-line about, you know, not run blocking right. But it was some plays where the O-line blocked good run blocking, and Cam didn't pick the right gap. So, you know. You gotta go back and watch film, man. Film shows you what you missed watch, watching it on TV or watching it when you're in the stands. That's true. That's true. Um, Cam, um, I think, I think mm, close to the goal line, it, um, he missed the cutback, and he probably maybe could have scored or got more yards. You know, um, he was running like how um, Pierce be running, just run right into the blockers. You know what I'm saying? Um, that's what we missing Joe Mitzen. That Joe Mitzen, he sees that cut, he sees that hole, and he cut and he go. Um, so that's why our run game been real stagnant the last couple of weeks. And, um, you know, that's a recipe for success if we have a good run game. Um, you know, we want CJ to cook, but we don't want to get killed either, you know? Um, so hopefully, you know, this week we could get Joe back out there and, um, get this run game going so we can be more balanced so we can see the offense that we all wanted in the summer. Um, uh, right now I feel like the offense is, is not living up to the hype. I feel like we got too many weapons to, um, be the number where we at right now. I think last time I checked, it was um 19 points, some points a game, almost 20 points a game. I think maybe 20 ranked offense, something like that. But what was the stat you were saying earlier? What you got up there? Um, com- compared to the NFL, well, I guess I guess it's just it's just them comparing it to the Bills. But we uh, we have the I think they said the eighth offense, the eighth best offense, if I'm not mistaken. But our rushing is bad. I think like like, like 19th in rushing. Like rushing has to be. Our rushing is horrible, so we had to get that up. But compared to NFL.com, we have the eighth uh, offense, the fifth defense, the third in passing, and nineteenth in rushing. So I don't know if that's accurate, but that's what it's showing compared to the Bills. Well, you you know every every account is different because NFL <laughs> says one thing, PFF says another thing, um, Pro Football Reference says another thing, yep. then your eye test says it all. 
Yeah, you know, I, the eye they, test is they, that's what you really probably, probably go by. Past four weeks. Yeah, <laughs> not at all, not at all. But it, it wasn't anything now, that you saw differently in the uh, when you went back and looked at the film. Yeah, I, I you know. You know, like 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 basically what you said about about the offensive line. Um, mm-hmm. you know, we give them a hard time, but the holes be there. It yep. just the running backs just not going to yeah, the right hole. Yep. Can't can't get him. Up, man. Yeah. Um, and then they're giving CJ time. You know, he's his his feet is moving a little faster than I think he should. Mm-hmm. It's like he's hesitating, hesitating, hesitating or, or whatnot. But um the defensive line, they're they're I'm sorry, the offensive line, they're holding up. Um, you yeah. know, Nico, um when I when I looked on film, man, it, he was open on a lot on a lot of plays. I don't know if CJ just didn't plays. see him or he just yes. got out the pocket too soon. This man yeah. could have had two hundred yards last game. Yep. So yep. um, so I, I'm seeing that I'm seeing that right there. So I think all that could get cleaned up more and just more and more uh, reps, more film work from all these guys. Um, and hopefully the offense get there, and we definitely need to get there this week because this week is a. I'm probably our biggest game so far this season. Um, you know, yep. both both teams are three and one. Um, one team coming off an embarrassing loss, so you know they're upset right now. You know, they got embarrassed on live TV. Um yep. was that yeah, Sunday night football, they got embarrassed. Yep. Um, so we're gonna get their best shot. So going off into this week, um, we got Joe Mitson back at practice, but he didn't practice, but he was out there, but he didn't practice. But they said that's the normal for a guy coming off injury. But we did see Tank okay. Dale. We saw Tank Dale out, out there today. Yep. He was getting some reps up and everything. So, mm-hmm. Bo, what do you think? Um, if Tank is good to go on Sunday, what is that going to bring different to the offense that we missed last Sunday when we were just going Mitchy here, two tight ends here? Um, it, it's going to change. It, it's going to be back to, to the uh, three, uh, what do you call it, 11 personnel, one tight end, one running back, three receivers. So, it's going to get back to that. We just got to. And, and and it's so funny because you saw the offensive line do a little bit better when it's two tight end sets. So I don't know if it's going to hurt us or help us. It really is going to depend on Bobby Slowick how how he's going to scheme these three receivers open for CJ to get uh, the move the ball down the field and not make him hold the ball so long. You know, whether that's just sending easy quick slants or comebacks stuff like that, some five yard out, something to make it where it's not going to be a long developing play. So hopefully. Tank Dell comes back, plays on Sunday, gives another weapon, another uh, read for CJ to go through his reads, and, and hopefully we can move the ball. Because we've seen all three of them together, and I think the only time we've seen them move the ball was the Colts game. I feel like even the Bears was kind of stagnant, and then the Vikings, nothing nothing was moving. So hopefully with them three in it, it's week five, they'll have more chemistry, and they'll get the ball down the field. Shit. See, now – you 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 being nice. You being nice. I'm being nice. Last, yeah, last yeah. time I saw three of them moving the ball together was on um, practice. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you you, you, you <laughs> not getting the coast game. I, I find the coast game was was. I mean, first game of the season. So I just I just played the coast game. game. The second game, I don't know what was going on with the Bears. That defense was just fighting around. The mm-hmm. middle, Vikings game that was just horrible. And of course, we didn't have Tank Dell for the Jazz game. So it was just it was just me going uh digs. Yeah, I, I, you know, this coming up this Sunday um, with Tank back out there, I want to get him going. But at the same time, you you know, Diggs probably texting CJ say, look, I didn't get it. La- I didn't get it what I want to get in Minnesota. We got embarrassed. But I got to get this against You got to get the bills. You got to get, get the bills. bills. So I need I need them 15 targets you gave to Nico. I need them same 15 targets. I'm, I'm mm-hmm. going to make them count. I'm, I'm going to get them to move the chains. I'm going to get in the end zone. So this is probably is going to be a Stefan Diggs game. Um, but the Bills know that. See, the Bills, they probably don't care if Nico go off or Tank go off or Dalton mm-hmm. go off. They don't want Diggs to go off because they know he's going to talk. You know what I'm saying? So we got to also be smart about that as well, even though I would love for him to shut his old team up because they've been talking crap with the fans, um, their media, yeah. et cetera, et cetera, you know, about he's a bad guy, bad teammate, me, 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 Diva, 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 you know. Um, now so far he hasn't been that. Um, so, you know, we don't know what he is, but the past he has been, you know, but that's most mm. top receivers. They want the ball, you know, more yep. catches, more yards, more money. That's true. That's true. Um, yeah. it's, okay. it's rare. It's rare. You get the guys that they you don't know, put the head down like the Andre Johnson's of the world, you know, put the head down and just go out there and play ball, you know, yeah, not saying? receivers, not receivers. They, they receivers aren't built like that. <laughs> mm-hmm. Not all of them, but, yeah. but okay. So what you saying that, 
are you looking for Tank Dell on the pitch count? Like, is he gonna is he gonna be a low management on Sunday, or are we getting the full? We getting Tank Dell um, in most of the offensive snaps. Well, I don't know the severity of the chest injury he had. Yeah, because he said yeah, it was a bruise, right? Bruise, yeah. bruise right? Yeah. yeah, something like that. So I'm looking at more of Joe on a pitch count coming off uh, the ankle. No, the ankle come yeah. off a, a pitch count because you know it's a little different for him. Um, yeah. but I think I think Tank gonna be full goal. We're gonna see them damn jet sweeps in the backfield. We're gonna see that little wide receiver screen they go yep. throw to yep. him. Yep. So you already know what's gonna happen right there. But um, you know, okay. I'm happy to see him out there. I, like I said, I, I really want to get him going because, like I said, this offense is supposed to flow more and yeah. more and more. I just like, w- like when I watch the lines on Monday Night Football, I see us. Well, old machine. <laughs> yeah, you know what I'm saying. Yep. I, I, I I see us. I'm like, that's us. The lines. Yep. That's our offense. That's how our offense should flow. I mean, you don't know where it's coming from. You gonna know if Montgomery go get it. Gibbs gonna yep. get it. Um, St. Brown, yep. Jamison, yep. J-Mo. The, the the tight end. That's how we need to be, and they doing this with Jared Goff. Now he mm-hmm. granted he's the number, former number one pick, but the old line like is would, good. Though. Yeah, old, old line is good way line. better than our old line. But that's what Bobby comes with. You know, Bobby got to yep. make sure that you know play up to their strengths or or make some stunts where they don't look as bad as they've been looking. You know, because we got a top five quarterback. I need him to look like a top five quarterback out there. Now he's playing yep. good. He's top five in passing. You know, we got number one leading receiver. I feel like he could be even better. You know, I feel like it'd be even better. What you got, Bo? So, so, so we're going into this Bills game with this with the Bills defense, which I I, I don't want you to give your prediction away just now. But do we put up touchdowns? Is it multiple scoring this Sunday? Man, see, see, you know, the fan of me want to say yeah, mm-hmm. but. The play in my team so far, I want to say no. Yeah, because <laughs> because is, is, is it more so much as the Bills' defense, or just the incompetence of our offense? Like, are you who are you giving feel, the more credit to? Like, do you think like you don't have you don't have faith that much faith in our offense, or that Bills' defense gonna just wreak havoc? Which I don't think the Bills' defense is that good. Yeah, the Bills' defense isn't as good. They they faced one good offense this year, and they got the ass whooped. I just yeah. don't have faith. I just don't have faith in our offense as of yet. You know, I just feel oh. they still trying to get it together. Now, so, 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 do you think this offense doesn't thrive on a three? Because, because would you call Tank Dale a dom like dominant receiver? So, in, in a sense, you have three good to great receivers. Is this offense only can work with two receivers? Is is three too much at a time? Like, do we need a two tight end set to move the ball down the field? All right. I remember, I remember over the summer, um, in, in various chats. I mean, I'm in a lot of chats, and um, mm-hmm. you know, they just they just say Crenshaw always hate him. Crenshaw always hate him. And, you know, they feel like <laughs> if you if you say something that they don't like, it's a hate. Yeah, it's hate. And I, yeah. And I said that it might be too many miles to feed. Mm-hmm. Oh, but Ohio State, blah blah blah. I'm like this ain't college. This ain't this this ain't college. Yeah. And I feel like it is too much. Mm. I feel like it is too much. I think it is better. If you had two guys and a tight end, because yeah. okay, last year we had Nico Collins and Dalton, Nobody. yeah, Dalton, yeah, Nico and, that, Dalton. And, and that was it. And we was moving the ball, we was putting up points like that. I feel like right now, the way CJ is as as a man and as a quarterback, he don't want nobody to be upset after the game. I feel like he want to feed everybody. I want everybody to eat. Got you know it. what I'm saying? And um, <laughs> maybe he might got to be a little selfish and say, look. I'm feed him, feed him, feed him. Either you gonna be a teammate and support it, or sit your ass down. But yep. he ain't gonna say that. He ain't gonna do that. No, no, Yeah, yeah. So I, I, you, you know, like when we um, redid Did's contract, I'm like, damn, why we did this contract? We got him for three years. You know, now I'm looking at it now. Unless the unless the offense shut me up, we start putting up the, the points like I want to put up. It's mm-hmm. like okay, if Did's go, I think I'm okay with just Nico. And tank because I think that'd yep. be better long term. But if digs if digs show off, you know the the rest of the the weeds and going into the playoffs, I'm like, then I'm gonna have a different different tone. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. But but as of right now, I feel like it's better when it's just two guys. It's almost like you know in, in basketball, you know, you know that big three is good, but somebody not gonna eat. You know what I'm well, saying? Yeah, yeah. Somebody yeah. got to be quick wash. 
Yeah, yeah. So like when when LeBron yeah, when LeBron when, when LeBron when LeBron when LeBron went to the Heat, Chris Bosh, <laughs> he wants the same player that he was with Toronto. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So that that's how it's gonna be. So when that guy go to the bench, but see in, in football they don't go to the bench like that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, when that's they, true. So you got to just pick your spots. Pick your spots right there. But see, that's that, that's when I put the that's when I put the game plan on Bobby to so know that hey, you can't just you can't just give like force feed too many. Uh, 11 personnel. You have to mix in more with two tight end sets, and and then you're giving Nico a breather so Tank Dell is out there, or if you have to go five wide, then everybody's out there. But don't just go out there and just automatically shotgun, shotgun, three receivers out there, and you're trying to figure out how to get the ball to Tank Dell, Nico, and Diggs. Just make it easy on CJ so when you call plays, it makes the reads better, and it's more so levels and not so much like, okay, they all out here at the same time. Let me try to figure out to get Diggs the ball. Let me try to get Tank the ball. Try to get Nico the ball. Because as we've seen these past weeks, Nico is the go-to receiver. Exactly. He is. So he I is think, that guy. think Dell and Diggs need to just understand that, hey, 12 is him. Mm-hmm. That's who he's looking for when he's in the crisis. That's who I'm pretty sure Bobby is scheming open. So with, if you're open, you're going to get the ball. But you have to understand it's not going to be so much, hey, I need 1,500 yards this season or I want to get 10 catches this game. Play team ball. And then the catches will come to you. The score, you will score touchdowns. So hopefully they're on the same page with that. And I, I, I hope it's not so much like you said, CJ Stroud trying to trying to please everybody because you can't please everybody. You got three dominant receivers who have their personalities. You're not going to please all three of them. And you got a tight end. You got two tight ends. You got two tight ends. You got Case over. You got Dawson Schultz. When Joe Mixon come back, you got Joe Mixon. So it's just just make this offense fluid and everybody. Take wins as they stats, and not so much as I got ten catches this game. Bo loves those jet sweeps. No, he don't. <laughs> I'm not trying to be funny. I, I hate jet sweeps. I can't stand jet sweeps. I wish they take out the game. Wish they ban jet sweeps. <laughs> All right, <laughs> so, we never um, had a screen game, especially to our receivers. I don't know. That's a great question. That's a great question. I hate those receiver screens. I hate them. I hate receiver yeah. slow screens. And, 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 and I think offensive line isn't good enough to do running back screens, <laughs> so they don't do yeah. it to running back. If they do do it, it could be blocking in the back. Yep, <laughs> it's gonna yep. come back, go get positive yards, but it's gonna bring it's it back. It's gonna be something, uh, legal man down the field will be some BS. Yeah, it's gonna be some BS, man. They, you know, every time it's like third and long, it's always yep. you know, it's gonna always be. a smoke screen. Yes, you already know what it's gonna be, man. It's like. You know, that's like damn near every team's. You know, they'll throw that right there yeah. trying to get as many yards as they can get, maybe yeah. you know, better field position for the punt, or maybe try a long field goal. Yeah. Every play ain't gonna be the, the diary play where you throw it to the screen and he gets all those yards. That's not gonna happen every time. That was an anomaly, okay? But you praying for that to happen. Yep, yeah, man. Speaking of Dare, man, you know, shout out to Dare, man. Um, oh, yeah, you know, yeah, he had, he had like I say, um, great game, um, from the run game, from the pass game. Um, maybe we need to get his sister at the game more often. You know, if he's going to play like that, get her at the game, put her on the side where he he can see her and everything, you know. Because um, he did he did damn good, man, damn good game. And shout out again to um, um Bullock. Um, again, bro, thank you for saving that touchdown because yeah. we would have lost yeah. that game. Um, thank you for your hustle. I don't think that was Jimmy. I think that was Jimmy Ward. I think Jimmy Ward would have let that guy go. He was he was oh going to touchdown yeah. like yeah. that. Yes, that would have been a touchdown. Yeah, that would have been a touchdown. Called. Yeah, so um, shout out, shout out to Bullock again, and shout out to Doug Peterson. Shout out to you for calling this. Oh, for yes, that was that was stupid. You should have just kicked the field goal, man. I get it. You on the road? Did he <laughs> call the, the quarterback draw, or did Trevor Lawrence just say, I- "I'll run it in"? I, now, I really think Trevor just did that right there. I think Trevor tried to catch oh, us off God. guard, and we wasn't we wasn't fooled. You know, we wasn't fooled at all. But I feel like he should have just took the points. Take the points, but. Take the points. I always take the points. Yeah, you always take the points, man. You know, you you on you on the road. Bro, the point. Point. <laughs> but but either way it go, if they took the points, they still lost the game. So yeah, yep. Still they were lost by one to the four. <laughs> yep. So I guess I, I guess they like, hey, we was trying to you know let our nuts hang. Yeah, yeah. but um, and, and that's why I actually go back to that game, which I know we we already recapping everything. Go back, go back. That go last back. drive, what, did you have all the faith in CJ on the last drive? Like, did you have faith in our offense that was gonna get a touchdown? Man, ever since I was at the Tampa Bay game last year, I got yeah. all the faith in this guy. Okay, like I said, a star was born on that game okay. right there. I was at the game with my my son was at the game, and we was crunk as hell. Man, we was throwing popcorn. No, not popcorn. We were throwing cotton candy now. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I was like, damn, because 
it, it almost felt like it was a like a playoff atmosphere, you know, when you threw that game with a touchdown to the tank and everything, man. That yeah. game was good. We was down by double digits. That was a great game. That's one of them games I like to go back and look at right there, man. To me, that yeah. was his best performance, bro. That was his best performance of the year, bro. That, that was, was a great, great game. game. That was Hell yeah. game. So yeah, I had faith in him, man. And and the play calling um right there was perfect. Now, even though it was a couple of runs in there, but I think those runs he was just setting it up because he knew we was gonna score a touchdown. So I think yeah, they're, they're, they're gonna take uh, time off the clock for sure. Time on the clock, yes, that's what he did. So, but that was that was a perfect, perfect um, I guess you could what, call it like a what, two minute drive, I guess, you know. Yeah, yeah. Uh, perfect. Yeah. Perfect. So that was good. Perfect. That was good by Bobby. You know, um, I just feel like, you know, Bobby, you know, just Hey, bro, you know, get it together. I mean, a, a graph came out today. Um, you're the 20, 28 best office coordinator out of 32. Ooh. That's not good, bro. That is, not that good is, at all. That's not I need good. you to, Bobby, I, I need you to treat every drive like a two minute drive if that's how you're gonna call two minute offense. Just just treat every drive like a two minute drive. Yeah, like you know, I feel like her hurry it up so Thompson don't have to think yep. and he won't get a false start. Yep. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Hurry, hurry it up, man. Um, and then a, a, another thing, penalties, you know. Um, week one, we have six penalties, but week yep. two, three, four, we got double digit penalties. Um, how is this team led by D'Amico Ryan's is so undisciplined, Bo? Like, why are they so yep. undisciplined? Now, well, is it well, is it the refs just picking at us as they say, or are they just undisciplined? Nah, it's a, to me, it's undisciplined, but you, you you can tell who's getting the penalties, what side of the ball is getting the penalties. Oh, it's the offensive side getting the, uh, getting most. All of the right, and, and, and what kind of coach is Demico Ryan? He's a defensive coach. Okay, then all right. So he can only do so much. He can go over there as much as he wants. You see the defense side of the ball discipline. He got players making sure they make plays, coming to the ball, stopping plays, stopping fourth uh, fourth and goals. That side of the ball defense is discipline. It's the offensive side of the ball. He has to spend a little bit more time over there, get them on the same page. It's a lot of divas on the offensive side of the ball. A lot of divas. Not saying they're bad divas, but they like to pop out and show. I mean, hey, they 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 like to wear them nice clothes, a fashion statement. You see the you see the pictures coming in. You see Tunsil, the whole offensive line. They swagged out. They fly. It's all about a fashion show. It's not discipline. So once that offensive side of the ball can discipline for as Tunsil, as he's the leader of the offensive line, once he can show discipline, then the offensive line will fall in line because that's the leader. So if you're a captain of the team. You have to be the leader of the offensive line. So once that's you true. find the line, they'll follow the line. So that's all it is, man. Okay. So because you know, Tonsil, you know, it just he just it's like he just trying to get that check, you know. Yep. Trying to yep. get that he, check. He, 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 he come in, walk in with his bag, got his got he got that on. I ain't gonna lie, he got that on. He be having <laughs> it on now, you know. He got he, he got it, but at the same time, you, you gotta come to work. This is work. I get it. You wanna be a fashion statement and wear these clothes, be a model. Do that when you retire. You can be as many rock, 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 uh, rock, what do you call it, runways as you Runway, want. Yeah. Right now, you hit to play football. Okay. So get get in that mindset of football. Yeah, get in that mindset of um football. Um, another um Texas news today. Um, you know, Dylan Horton um came back to practice. Um, uh, we haven't seen him since he was diagnosed with leukemia. Um, you know, shout out to him. Um, mm -hmm. Bo. Now, he, now, he's back at practice. It's a 21-day window. Do you think he's going to play this year? And if he does play, I guess whatever he gives you is a positive, right? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, uh, another player to rotate on defensive line for sure. You can all, you can never have too many people to rotate for defensive line. But I don't think he plays this season. Um, Great story. I'm glad he's back. I'm glad he's back at practice. Amazing. Amazing. But I don't think they're going to rush him back. Just like how they did with Mitch. You know, Mitch, he went through the same process where they brought him in. And it was like a slow roll where they didn't rush him back. So I feel like it's going to be more so how he feels. So if Dylan says he's good to go, I'm sure they'd be like, okay, cool. But they're not going to be like, hey, you got to play. Yeah, I agree. I, yeah, I agree. Mm -hmm. I think, you know, just – just good to have him out there, have him on the sideline, first time on the sideline yeah. in a while. And, you know, maybe he could be some inspiration because, you know, it's one team out there um, a little bit more unfortunate than us. You know, uh, one of their players passed away, and yeah. I feel like they're, they're feeding off him. I'm talking about the Vikings. You know, the Vikings mm -hmm. feeding off their yeah. guy that passed, and, shit, they're 5-0 and right now. They're kicking ass. Mm -hmm. So, you know, he could be a little inspiration to us on the sideline, you know. Um, okay, so – is there anything that you caught in um, the press conference from anybody, from any of the coaches or the players 
it caught your eye that you want to talk about? No, no, not really. Um, it, to me, to me, you know, they, they do the same old, same old. We'll fix this up. D'Amico does a good job. We'll fix these. We're going to talk about. We talked about that, so we'll fix this up. So it's nothing really. I'm dialed in on. I'm interested to see what the press conference is going to be. Um, you know, because don't don't they have one on Friday for the game, right? Or is that just the injury yeah. report? Oh. Yeah, I want to see that one. Yeah. I'm going to pay. I'm going to pay attention to that one, and I'm going to see what they're going to say. Okay, see what they were going to say. Okay. Now, now this week is um H Town Blue Week. Let's um, go. Let's go. You know, I um pretty sure we all seen them practicing the helmets today. You know, I, I saw Stingley mm-hmm. out there with the helmet on and everything. Looks good. Now, Bo, let me ask you a question. Okay, first, mm-hmm. do you like the jerseys? Yeah, yeah, I, I love the jerseys. I feel like it's new. I feel like I feel like I feel like a lot of people. A lot of people was loving it because of the color. You know, they added a little H Town Blue in there and everything. I just love it because it's some new. Even the helmet with the the eight symbol, mm-hmm. fire. I, th- I think that that was one of my first jerseys I purchased when it was on sale. When they when they finally let the sale go, I said I'm getting this one because I know it's gonna sell out fast. Mm-hmm. So I, I actually love the jerseys. I think I gave it like a eight out of ten um, when I ranked them all. But yeah, I love it. I love it. I'm gonna see what it's gonna look like when they have them all on the field. Yeah, 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 yeah. Have it out on the field. And well, then, what about uh, how you feel about them H Town blue jerseys? Okay. Well, before I say that, also when they do the end zone, I want to see how the end zone. Oh yeah, like, yeah. That colorway gonna be tough. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then are they gonna put the H in the fifty yard line in the middle? That'd be loud. They put the, the H uh, right there. They got to. I feel like you got to. If that's a logo yeah. on him, you gotta put the H in the middle of the field, bro. Ooh, that'd be killer. You gotta put the H in the middle of the field. But that'd um. I love the uniforms. I feel like I well, actually I wish that we could wear it more. I think we're gonna wear it one time this year. Yeah, yeah, just um, one time. I wish yeah. we could have worn it also when we play um the Jets on on on, on Halloween. On Halloween, you know, yeah, that you know, Color Rush tough. Thursday and everything. Yeah, that would I, been tough. I, I, I love them. I just feel like we the the team we playing is the Bills, and the Bills wear blue as well. <laughs> and I know they're gonna wear white for the game, but their fans gonna wear blue. I feel yep. like it's gonna be a so much different type of blue in the stadium, you know, it's gonna look awkward on TV, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I feel like we should have chose another team to play it against. Now, I was gonna say Detroit, but damn, Detroit is blue as well. Detroit so blue. Yeah, blue too. I, I, so I guess blue too. I don't yeah. know who who we could have played. Uh maybe maybe I Tennessee. Maybe the Bears in their orange colors. I don't know. Yeah, uh, the, the Bears the orange, the, orange, maybe the Bears, but the, but the Bears, Bears see like that. that we always Liberty White on the first game, yep. so we had to go Liberty yep. White, you know. Yep. Yep. Uh, yep. I, maybe Tennessee, since Tennessee did the blue on us last year, we'll reverse it back to them and do the blue on them. So maybe yep. we go one against Tennessee. But, 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 uh, they're gonna wear they also their ones, right? The uh, Oilers colors when they play us, right? So I find yeah, that see, so they 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 still doing it, you know. They still doing it. So maybe I guess this was the the right game. And then when I looked at the CBS thing, I, it, it said eighty. I think eighty five percent of the world going to see us anyway. So it's almost like a prime time game. Okay, well, that's good. Yeah, that's so that good. that's pretty good. And then we got um, you know, the best commentators um doing this game for us and everything. But um, oh, yeah, we, I say, um, we got Romo. We got Romo doing it. Is it Romo? No, no. Nah, nah, nah. Is Romo commentating this year? Because I haven't heard him. Because he's, at he's all. CBS, right? Romo CBS, CBS, right? Oh, okay, it's it's um Iron Eagle. Oh, Iron Eagle doing okay. Yeah. Okay. I haven't man. They I haven't like heard. I haven't heard nothing Pittsburgh. about nothing about Romo. No, you know, smart play. He know the play for it happened. Yeah, I haven't yeah, heard yeah, yeah, about yeah, him. Yeah. You know why? That, that, that's because Tom Brady on Fox right now. So everybody oh. is, is lowing over Tom Brady on Fox. So they really can't okay. get nobody else no looks. Yeah, because he was he was the 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 thing, you know, because. You know, it was funny when he signed that deal with them because that was the year that a lot of Texans fans thought we was gonna get Romo. Um, yep. you know, we thought he was I mean, coming here, come here to Houston, um, and he ended up signing the deal with them, man. Um, <laughs> man, listen, that was that was one of those years right there. Uh, but um, yeah, but yeah, I, I love the jerseys. Like I said, I've been sending them around the stadium. Um, the those the the blue ones, and I saw the, the lighter blues as well around the stadium. So it's gonna be it's gonna be live. I'm gonna wear mine on Sunday, man. Um, yeah, they clean, they clean. Like I said, I just wish they you know wear more than one time, man. You know, you get these new uniforms and mm-hmm. you only go to wear it one time. Like, yep. okay, yeah, same thing know. with the red. I, I think the red is only twice. I think they're gonna wear yeah. the red against Detroit, Christmas and, and Detroit, Ravens, right? right? Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. It, yeah. Well, yeah. Uh, against uh, against Detroit, okay, that's gonna look good on TV, especially yeah. if Detroit wore a black and blue like they did. Mm-hmm. The other day, oh, it's gonna look real good on TV, man. Be tough. 
with and then that's the new helmets too right yep the new red helmets yep yeah new red helmets so that's gonna look real good man real good the whole world see us man houston versus tubi that's what i call it houston versus tubi <laughs> <You know? laughs> yeah oh yeah yeah because see look the uh the detroit the detroit is a red on red so it's red helmets red jerseys red pants Mm. And the Ravens is red helmet, red jersey, white pants. White so, pants, man. That okay. Detroit game, we're gonna look nice. They're gonna look nice on that Detroit. Yeah, game. so we're gonna be swooping in that game right there. You know, what I'm that's Sunday night too, right? Isn't that Sunday night? Yeah, Sunday night, Sunday night. Ooh, no gum, gonna look no good. Gum, gum. Them lights. Yeah, it's gonna look real good. I hope they have, hope they have some better performance than they had last Sunday night. You know, <laughs> you know it's gonna be the same one. Oh, man, <laughs> who is over that right there? Who is over the? <laughs> Entertainment uh, committee, please. Be the same ones, man. They got them on the payroll. Godly, holla at your boy, man. Godly, <laughs> man. It's only so much of them I can see, bro. Godly. It's other I'm artists boss. out here. I'm a boss. You know, <laughs> man. You got you got to ride with it, man. That's 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 the culture. It's the culture, but every game, every game, every God. prop to have game, like Even the playoff okay. game. I remember when I was the playoff game. They had the playoff okay. game. If they want to show love to the culture, why don't you have them do a, a pregame show outside nah, and get it for somebody else inside? So pregame outside, pregame outside, you, you you buy the fans, you get to touch the fans, feel the more energy like that, you know, get your pictures, you know, blah 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 blah. You know what I'm saying? Because when you're doing inside, people see it so much, halftime, they gone. And ain't nobody mm-hmm. sitting down. Yep. Nah, fact, I'm going to half, get a pistol. See what I'm saying? Halftime looked like mm-hmm. Pre-game, because don't nobody be there at the pre-game mm-hmm. either. That's what halftime looks like. So if you do it outside, like right there in front of the main shop, I think that'd and be it's better. So, it's so funny because I remember, I remember. Um, this is not about the halftime show, but I remember you just say like people not in the, in the seats and everything. I found out why they not in the seats, Uh-oh. and I, I'm I'm finna, I'm I'm finna break it down. Oh, break it down, bro. I had a club seat this past game against the Jaguars, and most people in the club section still. They in the lounge chair. They watch the game from the TV in the lounge area. So that's why they're not in the stands. They chill in the club seat, enjoying the, the chairs and festivities in the club area by the bars and stuff. So that's that's my recollection of why the stands don't be full like it should be. So what about the ones that's not in the club? Like on the, I have on no the, idea. I don't, on I don't, I don't, that's, that's what I don't know about. That's why yeah. I don't know. But I know the club section, they be, they be in the bar. They be chilling, boy. Yeah, they be chilling. They be watching TV, eating and looking around and everything. But see, it just, well, I, I don't watch every team, but it's just like whenever I do watch other teams, I'm like, oh, damn, why they, how can they fans get, get there? Still. And our fans can't get there. You know what I'm saying? Yep. Like, he, he, let me tell you, well, let me tell you the one that really gets me, bro. Like, okay, Chicago Bears. They, yeah. can't, they can't drive to the game, bro. They got to catch trains to the mm-hmm. game. They can't drive there. How the yep. hell can they get their own time being a seat? Yep. And we drive to the game. And even at a seven o'clock game, you still can't you. be on time and get in your seats. I'm telling you, it's a it's a it's, it's more of an outing. It's, to what I've seen, it's more of an outing. It's not like we're gonna go see the game. We're just going to, you know, stadium. The game is there, but I ain't really what we're going for. Especially because it was the Jaguars, too. Well, yeah, it's right. It's the Jaguars. But can, but can we treat I agree. It, it, I would love it, to see the stands just just packed yeah. out. Yeah, yeah. Can, but, can we know. treat um open kickoff like a tailgate? At the tailgate, everybody be out there, crunk on time. Yeah, tailgates be lit. Tailgates be, lit be on fire. Yes. Can we treat the game the same way? You know. What to say? I, hey, hey, man. I, I would love it. I'm on your side here. I would love to see everybody come from the tailgate and everybody just marching at the same time and the seats just packed. But it is what it is, man. You know what? They might. Um, this is what the Rockets was doing because the Rockets same way fans don't don't come or show up late. They was um having a happy hour in the first quarter. Mm. That's what the Rockets was doing. Maybe the Texans need to do happy hour as well, and that's on all liquor because. Like a margarita at the game at El, at El Tempo, it's twenty two dollars. Yeah, it's twenty two dollars, yeah. and it's a little bitty one too, like eight ounce. You know, mm-hmm. so maybe get some happy hour on that. Get some happy. They they make enough money. We'll get see. Happy. You know what? I'm I'm interested to see this Bills game. Maybe the Bill. Maybe because the Bills game three is three uh two teams three and one. Maybe be packed out. Maybe maybe with Bills fans. 
For Bills, you know, definitely yeah. Bills gonna definitely be there. They could be throwing yeah. people through tables and everything. So, yep. But yep. yeah, we. Like I say, I just I don't know. It, it just something about it. It don't matter if it's, it's the Rockets, it's the Texans, it's the Astros. Astros today had a damn playoff game. It was nobody there. Oh yeah, that stands empty. Well, they empty. They could smell. They, they, they knew what was happening. They knew. I guess they knew it was gonna be over. Huh? Everybody knew what was gonna happen today. I think everybody knew what was gonna happen. So everybody was like, "We're just not gonna talk about it. We're just gonna move on, move on about our business." But we knew. About we business, knew it was huh? right on the wall. We saw it. Cause we won't want supposed to be here anyway, you know. So no, nah, no, nah, especially all injuries yeah. and everything. Nah, it yeah, was, it was a fa- it was it was amazing. We got to the playoffs. I, yeah, I was surprised that, that as well, especially it was um ten games back. But all right, we all right. So um, so let's get off into the Bills game. Let's mm-hmm. get off into the Bills game. So what did you see? Um, if you did watch some of the game on Sunday, what did you see? What the Ravens was doing on Josh Allen to stop? You know his running stop his passing because he was killing the other team so what did you see from them that we need to export the same this sunday just contain it's more containing uh like i said i feel like no one's afraid of their receivers i feel like but if you if you get josh allen to make mistakes and throw the ball in coverage and just keep him contained and don't let him get no momentum if he gets momentum if he starts running the ball and he's just like, okay, I can beat this team. I'm scoring touchdowns on the run. If James Cook is cooking, that's what I think. Too. I feel like they neutralized James Cook. Neutralized James Cook, and the one-two punch is done because that's all they're feeding off of. They're feeding off of James Cook and Josh Allen. So if Cook is on the road, there's nothing you can do about it because now you because now you because now when that read option happens, you're worried about James Cook. Before you know it, 17 is coming around that corner. And he's up and down that field on you. Easy. So contain Josh Allen, keep James Cook neutralized. We have to fill the gaps. I, I, I watched in the past uh, against the uh, Jaguars uh, film, and of course we have Petrie in the box because we don't have another linebacker to run for a base defense. And Petrie is, is, is taking the wrong gaps. Discipline. Take the right gaps. Don't shoot the A gap. We're supposed to shoot through the C, and everything will be all good. Discipline football. Do you think that Petrie just be like getting too ahead of himself? He trying to like. Oh yeah, he's trying, he's trying to make a play. Yeah, yeah. trying to make the big yeah. play and just o- overthinking it and everything. Because yep. yep. I, 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 I know these players read comments. I, I know mm-hmm. they list list the shows and everything. And you know he know he had a bad year last year. Mm-hmm. So okay, yeah, because because you can watch it. I don't know if that was Aziz or Henry Toa Toa, but it was a four three tight base defense, and he shot the gap that Toa Toa was going to. So you just took his gap away, and now that hole just all just walled off, had room for ETN to run right through. So he got to make sure he shoots the right gap. Which, like I say, he's he's playing out of position, mm-hmm. so it's bound to happen. He's just trying to make a play. He's trying to beat them there and just be fast. Because that's what they say when you play football. If you don't if you don't know what you're doing, quote unquote, just be fast, get to the ball, and that's what he's it, doing. Okay, now if if D'Amico was here um, two years ago. Is Petrie a guy he would want to draft on defense? I don't think so. I don't think so because his defense isn't a Swiss Army knife type type defense. His defense is a four man front. You have a great mic, and you have safeties and DBs that can cover. So to have like a Honey Badger type or a Kyle Hamilton type Swiss Army knife that just roams the field, that's not what he wants. He wants three great. Not great, but three good de- uh, linebackers. So that way, uh, his defensive line keeping them clean. They can go in there and stop the run. That's what he wants. So I don't think he would have took Petrie. I think he likes Caleb Bullock way more covering than Petrie does. That's just me personally. And, and, and Bullock's yeah. a rookie, so that's a that surprises me. That surprised me as well. So um, speaking of Bullock, you know, like like we said, said earlier, shout out to him. Okay, if Jimmy Ward comes back. Mm-hmm. Is D'Amico going to be, hey, Jim's my buddy, Bullock, go back to the bench? Or he's going to oh, be no. fair oh, and let oh, no. Ward work his way in? No, Eric Murray is going back to that bench. That's just going back to that bench. Eric Murray is going back to that bench. I bet not see Eric Murray and, and Ward back there by themselves. I do not want to see it. If anything, <laughs> you keep Kellen Bullock as your single high safety and you work uh, Ward, I guess, as a uh, strong safety. And keep him close to the box and help out with Petrie and them. But as far as anything, 
I don't want to see Murray traveling no more following key receivers either. I don't want I don't want to see that either. That's gotta stop. Yeah. Yeah, it's gotta stop. I just like I said, again, matter of fact, I'm just gonna say it. Shout out to Eric Murray for still being on this team, bro. You have hey, really he's been you, you did the damn thing. Era. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, bro. Everybody else then came and, and went <laughs> and you you still here, bro. So shout out to you, bro. I don't know what you're doing over there, but you're doing something, bro. Um Okay, yeah, like you say, you know, neutralize um Cook and cause I, I believe Josh Allen was they was a leading receiver. I'm not sorry, leading rusher last yeah. game. Yep. So that's what we gotta do, bro. We gotta go back to dominate dominate against against the run. Now, you know, I don't think we're gonna have a, a Derrick Henry type performance <laughs> from our running backs, Mm-mm. but if we do, great. But um, you know, that's how they be able to, able to beat them. I mean, right out right off the gate, 87 yard touchdown, right oh, off the yeah. gate. So crazy. Um if if you know, if they de- they you know they run defense, you know, still letting up some yards. I think that's a, mm-hmm. a plus for us, especially you I know agree. getting Joe yeah, back no, and Milano, everything. No, uh, Milano, so I feel like yeah, this is a weak Bills defense. You need to take advantage of them. Yes, but see the same thing I felt last Sunday it was a weak Jazz defense, and we didn't take advantage of them. You know, they was was a lot a lot of guys on defense. I think it was that punt. That punt messed us up. That muff punt. Everybody off, and we was playing catch, and we should have had the ball. It should have been seven nothing us, but that muff punt put him at the in, in the five yard range, and it was easy touchdown seven mm. seven. That game should not to me. I agree. That game should not have been close. close. That should have been blowout. Hmm. So, um, now come Sunday, mm-hmm. and our offense still look the same way. Now, like like we like we said, I, I said, you know, give him give him give him week five, and then yeah, you told me you, you told five. me you told me last Sunday, give him week six, give him week six. Yeah, right? I said week six after the Bills. I said to the Patriots. That's what I said. You Patriots. said week okay. five. I said week six. I said week five. Now, if we still at this under twenty points a game again, well, I, I know it's nothing that we can do because you know we ain't out there coaching. Yeah, but, but damn, bro, like like. What's what's got to give? Like like, is there a way? Do they have like a Bobby mailbox that we could write into or something? Shit, Ask Bobby. Man. This is gonna be if if Nixon plays this game. This this be the first game since the Coast game where everyone's dead right offensively, right? Mm-hmm. And that game we put twenty nine points up on the Coast. Yes, uh, the Bears game. I'm, I'm not gonna count that because Joe Mixon got hurt, so he was in there iffy, and that defense was flying around. The uh, Vikings game was a shut of ourselves, and the Jazz game we didn't have Tank Dell, so. We need to put up more than twenty four points against the Bills, in my opinion, to beat the uh, to beat the Bills. We cannot go into there with twenty four or less points thinking we're going to beat Josh Allen, unless the defense just has a heroic uh, heroic game and just plays outside their mind, which I doubt it. But if it's a shootout, we have to compete and, and keep up with them. All right, so right now the Bills are twelfth in defense. They're giving up a little under twenty-one points a game, and they're mm-hmm. number two in scoring. Even with last week beat down, they barely score points. They still number two in scoring, bro. Yep. Man, yep. so they're gonna. I mean, they're gonna put up points. They're gonna put up points. So twenty-four might not be enough, Bo. Nope. You might gotta get in the threes, bro. We gotta get in the thirties, bro. Gotta, you gotta get in the thirties. Get in the thirties. In the 30s, but like I said, that's going to have to be a great game call by Bobby and the O-line, and the offense has to execute when we need to to score points and not kick field goals. Yeah, it's not kick field goals. I mean, you know, because, I mean, yes, we're making, you know, <laughs> making Fairburn earn his money, but um, I, I need to get CJ touchdowns up, bro. I need, I need to get them touchdowns up because right now he's on pace to have like 26 touchdowns. That's not good, you know. Mm-hmm. I, I want to at least get to the 40s at least, you know. Somewhere and the crazy thing is, this is supposed to be the easy weeks. This, this is supposed to be the easy weeks. This is supposed to be what he's throwing up, putting up four, three touchdowns a game. And you get a touchdown, tough. you get a touchdown, you get a touchdown. Tough, man. Yeah, man. I, I need one of them four, five touchdown games from him, man. I mean, you know, something, something, something. Shit. you know, but like, <laughs> I, hopefully, hopefully, you know, it, it, it'll come soon. If it don't come this week, then it gotta come against New England. Have you know, Patriots. You, I, need, I need a full touchdown game with the Patriots. Yeah, I need a full touchdown game with the Patriots. Has to be, has to be, has to be brewing. It's brewing. I don't know it's when brewing. it's coming. Okay, so all right, so so basically, the, the key, like I said, so the keys to the game is neutralize Cook. Mm-hmm. Um, 
Contain Josh Allen. Or turn Josh Allen to last year Josh Allen. Because this year Josh Allen ain't thrown yeah. a pick yet. We need yeah, right. Josh Allen to throw some picks because he ain't thrown a pick in four games. That's a career high tough. for him. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. true. So, that's true. Yeah, so we need it like that. And like I said, no one's scared of their wide receivers. Um, I mm-hmm. mean, I the only guy I know is is, is Coleman, and then yep. and, and then Shakir, they got, right? I think Shakir, Shakir right? yeah, yeah, him, and, it's, and it's, then and then the, the tight end they got the, the tight end Kincaid, Kincaid you know. Yeah, yeah, but I, I feel like them guys that ain't don't. I mean, but I see, know. that's this is this game with Kincaid and Knox, right? Knox and Kincaid, right? They both yeah. play. They both healthy. They're gonna play this week. If they both play, this is gonna show D'Amico his linebackers. This is going to show what they can do, what they can do. And if Petrie is really a viable option, being a star or nickel, whatever player, because they're going to attack him. Josh Allen is going to attack this defense with these tight ends. So it's going to be a lot of plays where hopefully Petrie can cover the, cover the tight ends and make a stop. And you'll see toe toe on the tight end. Hopefully he can make a play or two and keep these tight ends quiet. Yes. Um, because we really of- needed Christian Harris. This was the game we needed Christian Harris. Exactly. You know, speaking of toe toe and, um, and AZ, um, you know, thank y'all for playing so much. Um, we are yes. playing. I think we maybe overplaying y'all a little bit, you know. Yep. But I really, really appreciate never, y'all. We had one defensive snap. Never you. One <laughs> yeah. defensive snap. And, and I think that US. snap was the last play of the game last week. Probably we, could be. <laughs> it was the last play of the game when we was throwing the ball be. back. So yeah, it, it was the Jaguars game. <laughs> yeah. So like that's 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 crazy. And Christian Harris. I mean. Um man, what's the update and, on this and guy? Me, that goes to show you that, like I say this all the time, your defense can stop a team for so long till you till you put some points on the boys' offense, and that shows you that this team really has nothing past the first depth chart. Like the first depth chart, anything past that is fool's gold because you have mm-hmm. Kamari Lasseter, they're extremely on the cornerbacks is playing really snaps in this in these games, and then you have two linebackers, only two linebackers playing snaps in this game. So anything past that. We're done. No special, they all special, special team type players. Once you get past so, the first depth chart, the, the line, didn't we draft a linebacker this year? Did we? Oh yeah, uh, Hill. I think it was Hill, yeah. right? Jordan Hill. Is yeah, Jordan yeah. Hill? So is he a special team? Is he a special teams guy or something? I mean, why? Why, why I think he's a practice squad player actually? Practice squad. Man. I think he's on the practice squad. Man, they just... yeah, because 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 the linebacker depth chart is is Aziz, Toa Toa, Nelvin Hewitt, uh, Jake Hansen, and the Phillips guy. Man. Who is Phil? Phillips guy number thirteen, I think. And those, okay. those to me, those special teams players, bro. <laughs> That's why Petrie is playing that that nickel star position. Yeah, because they don't trust nobody else. Damn. And they're so, getting tired. So basically, the next yes. player, the next player is gonna be number fifty nine. Gonna be fifty nine. Gonna be the big one. Have to put a helmet on. <laughs> Nico gotta get out there. <laughs> Follow somebody, man. Yep. Yeah, stop. Gotta, yep. <laughs> it's crazy. All right, so all right, so like I said, so contain Josh Allen. Don't let Cook. Don't let Cook cook. Don't let Cook cook. Don't let Cook yeah. cook. Yeah. And I, and then um, yeah, basically that's it because like I said, you contain Josh Allen with about the wide receivers. Yeah. And then on, on on defense, you know, that's, do what we do. Do what we do. Do what we efficient. You know, more efficient yep. on offense. You know, um, yep. like I say. Like I say, I, I'm I'm with the hurry up. I'm I'm with the college style stuff. I, I'm with the hurry up. Keep their defense tired, so they don't have to sub yep. in, sub out. I'm with that right there. Yep. Um, yep. So I, so offense keys of the game is discipline. Discipline. Don't, don't shoot yourself in the foot. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Be efficient. And defensive keys of the game is don't let cook cook. Contain Josh Allen. That's all you got to do. You win this game, and, and we yeah. four and one, and they're four three and, and two. Man, four and one. That that'd be great. Um, yep. real, real great. Um, golly, I, I hope it happens though, bro. I hope it happens. So <laughs> on that note, give me your score prediction. Oh man. I've been, I've been so wrong these past four games, man. Let me see. Okay. I got Texans. Golly, I don't think it's going to be a shootout though. I got Texans 31 bills, 28. It's gonna be a game when the field goal, probably. Yeah. 30. Oh. Yeah, Texas 31, Bills 28. All right. So Texas 31, Bills 28. Okay. Um man, it's like I said, I wanna I I know oh. we gotta score a lot of points to beat this team, yep. but I, until they show me, 
I'm, I'm scared. I'm scared to <laughs> to say it. So I'm going to do something that I haven't done all year, and I'm mm-hmm. going to go Tetsons. 21 mm-hmm. Bills 27. We lose. Ooh, by six, by a touchdown. Yeah, we got six. the ball last, or they got the ball last? We got the we got the ball last, bro. We, just don't we got the ball there. last. So we're we, we going for the game when it the game okay. when drive to get you no know, and gotcha. we, we turn over on downs. Okay. So 27-21 Bills. I got us with a loss this Sunday. We're going to three and okay. two, and we're gonna be talking a hell of shit comes on the recap. <laughs> Oh yeah, yeah, that that. that. <laughs> so yeah, that folks so, gonna be happy, and bad man. I don't know, man. Ho- hopefully, hopefully it will be happy. Hopefully everybody coming here rejoicing. But the way we criticized last week, we're probably still coming criticized again, even after a win. That's right. funny. Okay, so on that note, um, Bo, tell everybody where they can find your incredible work at. Yo, you can find me everywhere at Bo Diggity Seven One Three. That's across all socials. You know the deal. And uh, keep supporting the page, man. Everybody doing great things around here. Yes, sir. Y'all can follow A1, Day One Tetson. Y'all can find a messenger, Kino. And you can follow 713 Houston Sports, Ruben. And I'm your host for the day, Fifth Ward Crenshaw. I'm on all platforms. And like you say, man, follow the page, like, subscribe. Um, like Kino been saying, um, the last like month or so we got something coming some special 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 coming um that i'm just, I'm just gonna say no other podcast has ever done you know so we're about to put it out there for y'all and i hope y'all enjoy it so stay tuned we will send you updates yep. when it's done and on that note usually i say matt hit the bumper but i'm gonna hit the bumper today Chris, I hit the bumper, hit the bumper. <laughs> 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 all right job Yo, check it out, free rapper for the Texas. Put big in it, Crenshaw Bridge, we flexing. Houston rap style, we bringing the heat. Talking Texas football.